OK, this is a quick overview of the new variation system in Auto Fence and Wall Builder. So we'll start off by making just a quick, simple fence like that. So we've got what, one, two, three, we've got five panels. Now, there are two ways of making variations. The first would be to swap out individual panels for different prefabs to give it a different look. Or well, the second is just to procedurally change them via size, position, rotation, things like that. So we'll have a look at that first. So we'll switch on Use Variations. Uh, nothing's changed yet because we haven't set any parameters. So the first method is to change their orientation, of which here we've got three different versions. We can swap the back and front panels. We can mirror the panels left to right, or we can turn them upside down. Uh, you can have any permutation of these. So if we switch all three on, uh, you'll see each panel looks substantially different now. Now, we've got three modes here, which I'll cover later. But the, what, the mode we're in now, Quick Optimal Variation, that attempts to automatically assign any variations to give the maximum difference, maximum visual difference as you look at the panels. So here it's it's arranged the different orientations and as you can see each one's slightly different from the other. Um, now I'll switch those off a moment. The second way we can make changes is with position, size and rotation. So here I've switched on one of four alternative um, sets of parameters. And you can see we've got a slight height variation set up. So we can change those. Uh, and we've also got a rotation set up. Um, now I'll create a second variation. Here we've got some height difference. So it's raised off the ground slightly and with some more um, rotation. Um, now if instead of using quick optimal variation, we switch to sequenced, now we're in charge of setting up the individual variations. So I'll start by resetting all of them. And I'm going to use five steps, i.e. five different sets of uh, parameter differences, which in this case, I'll, I'll uh, relate to the five uh, visible panels. So step one, any changes we make to this is going to change the first panel. So just for demonstration, let's raise it up. Uh, step two, we'll change its size a bit. Uh, step three, we'll create a, a Y rotation like that. Um, step four, we'll sink into the ground by lowering its position like that and step five we'll leave as is. Um, now if I was to add uh, more panels, so if I click here to add more, you'll see that it's starting to loop. So we've got our first five uh, variations that we've set up here, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's repeating again, one, two, three, and that would go on infinitely. Likewise, if we now set the number of steps to, let's say, two instead, it's simply looping the two steps we've got over and over again. But we'll put it back to five. Let's clear that, and we'll build again. Now, at any time, you can, uh, you can reset all steps. So now we have all five steps uh, showing the same prefab with the same parameters. Now, these menus here are going to let us change the actual panels. Um, now, it's unfortunate that the menu disappears, but it's a Unity bug on Mac at the moment, so we just have to live with that. So here I'm going to choose... Um, we'll choose a bent version of the same panel. So, we've still got our five steps. So on step two now, 
we'll choose the bent one that we just selected. And you can see panel two here has now changed to that. Likewise, on five, I've set up another, um, another alternative, which is the ripped panel. Yep. Now, uh, whether you're on sequenced or quick optimal variation, you always have these four alternative menus to choose the four alternative prefabs. Now, once you've chosen the four prefabs, you can assign them in, in any order whatsoever. So that's what we're doing now. So we've got, uh, these two are the same at the moment. So let's change this out one, this one for a, a triple panel. And we'll assign that to number five. And you can see now that panel number five has changed to that. And let's change number four to the ripped variation. So here we go. Uh, and actually, I've just noticed we've got six panels, so let's make six different steps. So each one can be different. Number six we'll set to be the ripped panel as well. There we go. But because that's a bit of an obvious repeat, let's let's try uh, changing its orientation. So we've mirrored it on the x-axis and then turned it upside down. So that's uh, that's good enough. Uh, panel four, I think we'll we'll shrink a little bit. And yeah, that's good. Okay, so the the only two the only two panels that are identical now, panel one and three. So with three, we'll keep the same prefab, but we'll we'll invert it. Okay, now so remember you can at any time change the number of steps. If we set it to two, it's just the first two looping. Three, first three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's put it back to six. Now, if I switch between sequenced and back to quick optimal, uh, you, you can see quite a difference. Using exactly the same source material, but got two completely different looks. And what I'm going to do now is reset them all again, and I'm going to switch off use variations as well. So we're we're kind of back to square one. And now I want to show you how to create some variation just with randomness. So here we'll, uh, we'll add some random height variation. This slider gives you a maximum height and a minimum height. So let's set them to extreme values. So you can see it's, it's randomized the height. Uh, a pretty good way actually just to create very quick variation, even though that's a bit extreme, we'll set it back to something bit more reasonable, something like that. Uh, now we can do the same with small random rotations. Now the reason we're calling it small is because in the proper variations section you can set big uh, variations on any axis that you want. But again I'll, I'll turn these random variations off for clarity. We'll both go back to use uh, rail A variations. Um, so to reiterate, you can choose up to four different prefabs to use as alternative panels, which we've set up here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna deliberately change one of them to something quite different. Uh, we use the uh, particle board. So now we've, we've set up four variations that we can choose from, which will now appear in this menu. So for panel five, we'll change it to the particle board that we just, uh, we've just chosen, there, there you see it. Now there is an alternative way to do this. Uh, if we hold down control, as I hover the mouse over the panels, you'll see the different sequence steps being selected that, uh, that coincide with that panel. So for step two, for instance, uh, I've got the control key held down. I'm going to right click on the panel and then I'm going to choose particle board again. So there we can have it. Uh, and back to this one. 
we'll switch it back to an ordinary rusty corrugated. Let's set up some uh, radically different ones just to make it more visibly obvious. So one of our four variations, let's choose... Uh, no, let's just choose a brick wall. We'll choose brick wall high. So now this will appear as one of the choices when I control right click. And there we have it. Uh, now the, the reason you've got this strangeness here is because the brick wall and post are almost identical thickness. So what we'll do on panel 4, we'll change the thickness so it's uh, a bit slimmer than the post. There you go. Now you might have noticed uh, when we control right click, we've got two different, we've got the list duplicated twice and there's a reason for that. Um, let me first of all add yet another very different panel to make it obvious, we we'll choose the white painted wood. And we'll reset all steps. So I'm going to control right click on the panel again. And I'll do what I did before and choose it from the second list, which is, as you can see, is labeled sequence cycle. So we've got a sequence length of six. So every sixth panel is, is that one. And I'll reset it, reset it again. And this time, I choose from the first list, which is labelled free. And you'll notice it only affects that one. So once again, the first list, choose from there if you only want that one panel to change, and choose from the second list if you want it to cycle with your sequence. So here's changing one uh, which will cycle the sequence. Brick wall, it's appearing every sixth. Uh, re reset that and now I'll change it so it only appears uh, once to the particle ball. If you do choose to uh, have them occur only once, i.e. unique uh, panel changes, they will appear in this list here. Uh, you can see we've got two listed and as you can see, we did add two different ones. Uh, we can clear them all or disable them all. We'll clear them all for now and do a reset again. Okay, now I will make a series of videos going through each of these modes and each of these functions individually. I just wanted to get something up very quickly now that it's gone live on the Asset Store just to... Uh, cover the changes. For, for those of you who are used to Autofence Wall Builder 2, obviously you're going to wonder what this whole new variation section is. So hopefully this has given you just a, a bit of an overview of what's going on. And as I say, uh, watch out soon for some more detailed videos. Uh, obviously you can ask questions either via tech support or in the forum and I'll happily uh, go over anything you want if you want to message directly or skype or email up to you we can do it however uh, okay thanks and i'll see you soon